We have a couple of meetings scheduled for this morning. The Brotherhood and WMU are asked to meet in Brother Curley's classroom. This is after worship. Also, the welcome team is asked to meet here in the sanctuary also after worship. Uh, so if you're on the team, once, you're dis once we're dismissed, just make your way up to the front here, and that meeting will take place here. Uh, the missions team, they have some items over in the Family Life Center, and they will be over there after worship service. They have some cake for sale, $1 a slice. Barbecue, five pounds for $1. Nope. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, if we can keep going. No, I want everybody to get a good deal. Uh, okay, a pound of barbecue for five dollars. Also, they have 2022 calendars, eight dollars each. Pardon me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Riverside Independent Church. They're having a golf tournament November the 13th. Four man team, captain's choice. First prize is $300, second prize is $150. Uh, we have a phone, a couple of phone numbers you golfers can contact. I'll leave this on the table out there so that you can get those phone numbers if you're interested in playing in that, that golf tournament. Any other announcements? Thank you, Gene. I just want to take a moment to thank everybody that participated in our event last night. It was a success. Uh, there's a lot of people involved, so I can't call all the names, but you know who you are. God bless you. I even asked God to bless you personally as well, but it was a success, and you know, as God moves us to do missions and more missions, I just pray that our team continues to grow larger and larger, and that, you know, as a church, we're coming together more and more and be more mission-minded. Thank you, Brother Tim. I also like to... I, I did it last night, but I also would like to thank Rudy Branch for supporting our singing last night. There was a lot of folks here from Rudy Branch, and we thank you and love you for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ron. Anyone else? We have a card that's addressed to the church this morning. It reads, Your kind and thoughtful expression of sympathy is deeply appreciated and gratefully acknowledged. Thank you so much for all your love, prayers, and support during the loss of our loved one. May God continue to bless you. Continue to keep us in your prayers. This is signed by the family of Mr. Aaron Casey Oxendine. Thank you. Tennessee, across the plains of 
Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA. There's pride in every American heart, and they can't take that. to be an American when the knees done no one free and I won't forget the men who died and gave that right to me now I'll gladly stand up next to you when the fin hooks to you today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA We're so proud to have with us today in our attendance on this Veterans Day service, these veterans. They yeah. have committed their lives at a time to serve our country and we are so grateful for them and their service. Did, did we miss anyone? Is there anyone who is in the congregation who may be a veteran? If not, so we got them all. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for these men? We're going to start to our left, and we're going to start with, with Brother Kenneth Greenway. If he would share his branch of service, his rank while in service, and his uh, number of years that he served. Uh, hold just a second. Nineteen and fifty six to nineteen and fifty eight. I was in the one oh first airborne division, rank of corporal. Your name? Kenneth Greenway. Amen. Amen. I'm Chris Hunt. Uh, I served three years in the army. Attained the rank of sergeant. Uh, I got out. I was out for some years. Went to school. Uh, pastor to church. Then I received an appointment to the Navy Chaplain Corps. And I spent 18 years in the Navy Chaplain uh, Chaplaincy. Uh, so 21 years altogether. Uh, achieved the rank of Navy Commander. Uh, Dino Maynard, I uh, served in the U.S. Navy from 1987 to 1981. I achieved the rank of E-5, which is a second-class petty officer. Don Kirkwood um, served from 1992 to 2003, um, attained the rank of sergeant, E-5. Uh, Jerry Locklear, uh, I was in the U.S. Navy for two years. I was a seaman. Horace Hunt, uh, U.S. Army, two years, private first class. Roger Chavis, spent 20 years in U.S. Air Force, attained the rank of Master Sergeant E-7. Larry Freeman, 
I was in the National Guard and in the Army for 22 years. Roscoe Lewis, U.S. Army, two years, Sergeant E-5. Eric Locklear, uh, U.S. Army, 24 years, nine months, and nine days, uh, ranked with E-6, Sergeant First Class. Lawton Jones, uh, Senior Master Sergeant, E-8, Air Force, 34 years, with extension due to my AFSC, 4 to 34 years. Brian Guest, Brian Gist, <laughs> can't even talk this morning. Brian Gist, United States Marine Corps, E-5, Sergeant, four years. Henry Hurst, U.S. Army, Specialist, fourth class, 72 to 75. Today we are we are missing two of our regular attenders, two of our our folks that we think are, or we consider um, valuable members to our church, Brother Larry Chavis, who served two years in the U.S. Army, and Brother uh, Bobby Brayboy, Doctor Bobby Brayboy, who served, if I'm not mistaken, two years in the U.S. Army and 32 years, if I'm not mistaken, in the U.S. Navy. So we 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 are so grateful to be able to take time out and not only thank these men for their service, but thank God that he brought them back. Amen. And we owe a lot of our freedom to men and women who are willing to serve and protect this country. We can sleep at night because of men and women who stand on a wall and say, no one's going to harm you. Aren't you glad to know we live in a country such as this? Amen. Amen. Let's give them another hand clap of praise. Good morning and welcome to Reedy Branch. We're so glad to have you. Those of you who are visitors, we invite you to come back. Those of you who are family, good to see you again. Uh, we thank, we indeed thank our, our veterans for their service. More than that, we thank our Lord Jesus Christ. Th by the way, I'm glad you did that. This is Mr. Ethan Chavis. Um, I failed to share with the church um, who he is. This is uh, uh, Mr. Jamie, Brother Jamie Chavis's son that's been helping us on drums for the past couple months, I, I think it is. So, you know, he wanted me to remind you that he wanted you to know who he was. <laughs> and uh, Miss Selena, is Miss Selena here tonight? Today, today? Miss Selena, Miss Selena, Miss Selena, yeah. Is she here? Why don't you stand, Miss Selena? And that's that's his wonderful mother back there, and his sister. And 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 I see you too, Mr. Aiden. We're gonna sing. Whoa, who is that? This, did you bring her back down? Did you bring Dustin back down? I don't know which one it is. Sorry about that. Let's try again. I invite you to stand at this time as we sing Power in the Blood. The power that's been behind the security and, and prosperity of our nation. Thank you. 
We're, uh, we had a wonderful uh, singing last night. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful singing. Brother Tim, if you would pull up Psalm 62, verses 7 through 8. Uh, while he's pulling that up, I want to thank Brother Ronald for allowing Reedy Branch to host the service last night. It was a wonderful, wonderful service. Those of you that were here know that. Um, I'm sure you'll be seeing on social media, Facebook, YouTube, at least bits and pieces, if not the whole uh, service last night. Amen. So yes. those of you that were not able to be here, those that are watching at home, uh, you should see those, uh, those videos coming out shortly. What a wonderful service. Um, it, we, bear with us this morning. We've got a lot of changes that we're, that's going on. So, uh, you know, technical things can always be a, be a challenge to iron out all those bugs. But uh, we thank you so much for coming this morning. I wanted to read uh, in your presence. Last night was uh, it touched my heart. Uh, it was uh, it was a time of, of pouring our hearts out to God, and every Christian at some point knows what that means. This year has been a year of a lot of pouring out of our hearts to God. We've all hurt in so many ways, and this scripture was such an encouragement to me. Uh, I invite you to read along with me. Uh, Psalm 62, verses 7 and 8 says, In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Yes. Selah. Amen. What a refuge He is. Amen. And you know, if our Lord Jesus had to suffer, to be sure, we're going to suffer. That's right. It's all part of the walk we, live, we walk with Christ. 
It is a walk of suffering. And no matter what you're going through, if you are His, if you are in the family of God, He expects you to pour your heart out to Him. When you're hurting, even in the good times, pour your heart out to Him. And He's going to listen every single time. What a great, great comfort that is to know that we have a God who is powerful. We just sang about the power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. But at the same time, He is a God of love. Amen. What a mighty combination. Love and power. What a good God we do indeed serve. Yes. Are there any praises this morning? I, I'm going to start. I thank God for being able to do everything that I am able to do in His name. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. We each are all blessed. And I want to praise God this morning for all that He's doing in me and around me. Are there any other praises? Everybody's... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, I was my home from New York the other day. And as the plane was taxiing to take off, he ended up. Yeah. That could have been a whole lot worse. Yeah. I just thank God that he kept him here because I thought that was a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank I just want to all praise God for yes. keeping Amen. him safe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Any others? I feel grateful for it. I got some MRI results this week that I didn't have, but I know God's on my own, and I'm praising for healing right now. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Ms. Craig, Grace, and Sarah, Matt. Any others? I got one. I went to the eye doctor, and he's scared of me. I don't want to tell him. Mm. I know these hands I was in. And the picture here to put that message on. Well, they sent me a thing to ask questions. And he said, I'm fine. Praise the Lord. The doctor told me that first I get blind. Mm -hmm. So that's what scared me. Mm -hmm. But I know who loves the future. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. It hands on me. Yes. Yes. And I want to thank everybody that sent up as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Any others? Maybe you have a... Go ahead. Thank you, Lord, for all of you. And we're both proud this morning. Yes. Yeah. We've got me, family, friends, who's gone. I miss you like this morning. Yes. That's right.
It's all right, Miss Pat. sat back there and cried the whole service. And I told him this morning, I said, son, I said, conviction was on you last night. It was the time to get up. But uh, you, know how, you know how things don't get good. But remember them in prayer, my yes. son, two sons. Yes. 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 Any others? Yes, I'd like to say something. Um, we all have troubles and sorrows. Yes. And uh, I lost my mother, father. It was hard. It was real hard. But time... Uh, heals all wounds, mm. and as time has passed, I've married, mm. and now I have another mother. Mm. She is good to me. Praise as I can tell. Thank you, Lord. 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 Brother Mark, I, I, did, I was talking to Brian this morning, and uh, <clears throat> I was just thinking, you know, with the COVID and other things, you know, we've had a lot of young folks here lately that's left us with crying. And I said, well, you know, I, I just turned 62. They started getting my little social security. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, you know, I, I look at daddy's side of the family, I look at mama's side of the family. Daddy had 12 brothers and sisters. Count him. Mama had six. Counting her. I don't have no aunt uncles on the dead side. Bloodline wise. I don't have but two legs on mama's side. Ain't paying nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. I said, you know one thing? I said, I'd get to see them again. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. One thing. And I said, you know, my back is so important. And they the devil try to keep us out of church. Go ahead, right. bro. They try to keep us out of church. But you know, time passed on through. Yeah. We're coming back. We got folks that, you know, it's in real bad physical shape. Yes. They're able to come. Yeah. They're able to come. Thank God for that. Yes. You know, I said, well, you know, I, I don't have blood on family, but I got you more. Hey. Yes. Yes. I look for you all. Yes. I look for you all. Yes. I hope you look for me. Yes. You make my will. Yes. You may be stronger. Yes. So, you know, the bond, it takes all of us to do that wheel up. And, yes. you know, like Brother said, the Lord be good to every branch. Mm -hmm. You know, we give and give and give and give. He's going to give you more if you, if you keep it away. You yeah. give you more. That's right. That's the way it works. Yes. But I love him. Keep me and my family in prayers. You know, We've got a lot of young couples, you know, they, 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 I, you hear them talk, you hear them talk day and day and night. I got this one, I got this one. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I said, well, just keep Christ in mind. Yes. I'm like Paul, I'm content, one day at a time. Yes. You know, he wants us to save and yes. prepare for the future, but take it one day at a time. That's right, that's right. That's I love right. you all, don't be Thank you, Brother Mike. Brother Mark, I got a call from Miss Cora Lee this morning, and she asked if we can remember her and her family in prayer. Also, Miss um, Christine Carter, Miss uh, Francis Hunt, and Ashton Blue, they are all in the hospital. Miss Ashton is, uh, she was admitted because of blood pressure, but the baby is 
doing fine. But let's keep giving on prayers. Yeah. Let's keep on prayers. Uh, yeah. He has almost got a brother. He has a chance he's got a brother, Carl. Carl with his candy sister. Can't, Carl's wife's candy sister. He had to put her in the wrist on him. It's Brenda. He's in the wheelchair. He's taking that thing. Yes. Brother Carl, that's the, uh, you know, you got to be in the wheelchair. Yes. Thank you, God. I have to be in the wheelchair. Yes. Yes. Well, one day I'm going to leave him. That's right. I'm going to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Very bright. She 
no others let's all pray our almighty god our king we come before you recognizing your power and your love god you are awesome we thank you for your presence here in this place recognizing also that we don't deserve your presence we are nothing but wretched sinners wretched sinners fit for hell and hell only but somehow by your loving grace that is greater than the sin in our hearts you saw fit to come to this world. Show us how to live, and even more than that, to die. To die that we might have life. We thank you for your resurrection power and the hope that it means for every one of your sons and daughters topside of this earth. We thank you, Father, for the faith that you have given us in you, knowing that there is a country over yonder that we will see one day. But if that was not enough, you're still here with us now, giving us the grace to live each day for you. We thank you for that grace, grace upon grace, that has filled our hearts and overflowing. Lord, as your word tells us, we pour out our hearts to you this morning. We have so many pains and so many heartaches. For those that spoke this morning, there's 10 others in this, in this sanctuary who are in pain as well. Lord, we call out to You. We don't even have the words to say. But we know Your Spirit prays on our behalf with groanings that we cannot utter. Thank You, Father. Thank You for not leaving us to our own devices, but interceding on our behalf, Lord Jesus. Thank You. Thank You for Your goodness to us. We pray especially for our veterans this Sunday. A Veterans Day that we're recognizing. As Miss Pam said, they've gone through so many ordeals that we cannot even imagine. And they continue, not only in body, but also in mind and spirit. Lord, we ask that your grace be upon them. Draw them to you. Those that are not yours, save them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we each have a one, as Brother Barry mentioned, that we're praying for. We pray for our one this morning that they might be saved. I pray for Alan that you would save him, Lord. God, I pray that you would continue to be with us in this service. That you would draw each heart to you. Whatever it is we need, I pray that you would provide it this morning. Lord, as a wise man once said, the perfect service is one in which we don't even see each other. Lord, I pray that in this service we wouldn't see anybody but you. Whether it's the man that speaks this morning or any singer that sings this morning, may you be glorified in it. Those whose names were called out, Lord, we trust that you will answer their prayer in the way that is best because you are indeed our good, good Father. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, I lay these requests at your feet. Amen. <laughs> Worship with the chorus we sing. The song is called Worth. I'm glad that he seen fit to come down, seen us fit to come down and gave his life that we could have life and have it more abundantly. You thought I was 
So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole And I could tell everyone I know That I am Continue to worship with us as we sing Graves in the Gardens.
Apologize. There were some folks who are part of our church that I did miss when speaking about the um, the veterans. Um, Mr. James Jones Jr. Uh, he he is a veteran. He's not here with us today. Mr. Uh, Dexter Buck Locklear is not with us today. He is a veteran. Mr. Luther Bud Carter. You hear all these uh, nicknames. Mr. Luther Bud Carter, who's not with us today, and Mr. Tony Chavis, who is not with us today. And we do want to recognize them and thank them for their service. It is my pleasure at this time of the service that we have for us today. And it's fitting on this day that we have a veteran, uh, one who has spent a lifetime in the military covering two branches. And uh, he not only did he spend time in the military, but he has pastored. So he is awfully familiar with the word of God. Uh, spent around the same time I come here, he became the uh, pastor at Berea Baptist Church. And uh, gotten to know um, preacher Chris, and he is a wonderful man of God. He's not one who's going to bring a lot of attention to himself. Uh, he, one of his best friends, will do enough of that for him, Preacher Charles Locklear, <laughs> and uh, uh, we are so delighted. I also, in my, uh, that one year that I went and worked with the school system, I got to meet his wife and got to spend some time with her at Union Chapel and uh, got to love her, and she is a, a very supportive wife. I'm going to let him introduce his family. He does have family here with us today. But would you make welcome our guest speaker today, Commander Reverend Chris Hunt. I was 
Every day. <laughs> Thank you. I feel your pain, brother. <laughs> uh, thank you, Brother Henry, for that. I appreciate that, brother. And uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today to uh, share God's Word with you. And Brother Hilton, thank you so much for inviting me to come to be a part of your worship service today. And uh, I'm just blessed to be here. Um, Brother Bobby Captain, Navy Captain Bobby Brayboy, encouraged me to wear my uniform today. And after 19 years of retirement, I'm just happy to be able to get in the <laughs> uniform. <laughs> uh, and uh, my family, would you stand please? Rayla, stand, your, your family. Uh, my, my daughter Kristen, my wife Teresa, my granddaughter Alexis, uh, Rayla, our, our friend, and my granddaughter Leah. You, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a little story about my wife. In uh, 89, I received orders to Japan, and uh, so we... Uh, uh, the family and I had two kids, and we got into Japan. And not long after being there, I had to deploy on a ship. So I left my family there in... Give me a minute. <laughs> uh, I left her there in Japan with two kids, and uh, she had to get everything, settle the family and get a, a house out in the Japanese community and everything, get her Japanese driver's license and so forth. And she was so stressed out. Of course, she had help from the military community, but she was so stressed out that she said that's the only time in 46 years she ever thought about leaving me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, I don't have a message on Veterans Day as such, uh, but I do have a message that centers around the story of a soldier. And when you think about it, if you are a believer, <clears throat> you serve in one of the greatest armies on the face of this earth. You serve in the Lord's army. And I want to share some thoughts with you on faith. And I'm going to be reading from Matthew's gospel, chapter 8, 5, verse 5 through verse 13. If you have your Bibles and want to turn there, it's Matthew 8, verse 5. Through 13. It says, if you'd like to stand, yeah, for the gospel. <clears throat> oh, I don't know the young lady's name, but who sang the, the song, Proud to Be an American. At the beginning, uh, I've never heard it sung better than that. You, you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> and and uh, all the singing this morning is just, I uh, never heard better singing anywhere else. It's just so, so great. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. 
the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the gift of your word, for the truth of your word. And God, we pray that you would open our hearts and minds to the things that you have to say to us today. Lord, let your Holy Spirit apply your truth to our hearts this morning. We praise you, dear God, and we love you. And we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In October of 2017, I was in a place called Malawi, Africa, on a mission trip with Pastor Charles, Pastor Charles Locklear, many of you, some of you may know him, and another pastor friend of ours from Spring Lake, North Carolina. And during the week, our host pastor drove us from village to village, uh, visiting with the people and sharing the gospel. And the people were very kind, gracious, and welcoming. And we went into a particular village and met a pastor there who invited us into his hut to share some food. And I don't know what all that food was, but we did, we were skeptical and did more looking than eating. We did, we did eat some of the rice which turned out to be a safe bed. You can't go too wrong uh, with rice. But uh, this pastor, unfortunately, did not look healthy. His eyes were jaundiced. He appeared to be very weak and uh, was obviously sick. And on our way to the next village, Pastor Charles asked our host, Pastor, what do people do out here when they get sick? And his response was to the point. He said, we bury them. They had zero access to any professional medical care. And he told us that many are born and die in their village without ever leaving to go anywhere for anything. And that's why our pastor friend in Africa does what he does. He goes from village to village preaching the gospel. He trains other pastors who, who do the same. And uh, from donations from friends in the United States and other parts of the world, he builds churches and provides Bibles so that as many people as possible can hear and respond to the gospel. Because he understands, as well as we do, that dying is not the worst thing that can happen to a person. 
We all die. If we receive medical treatment and care and recover from an injury or an illness, that's a wonderful thing. That's a, a beautiful thing. But uh, all of us have an appointment with death. Uh, Hebrews 9, 27 tells us, It is appointed unto men once to die. Every person Jesus ever healed eventually died. And the worst thing that can happen to a person is to die without Jesus. And Jesus himself reminds us that his sole purpose for coming to the earth was not to heal the sick. Nor did he come to implement social or political reform. He did not come to fix the economy, nor did he come to free the Jews from Roman oppression. For the Son of Man came, said Jesus, to seek and to save that which was lost. And here we have one of the many healing stories of Jesus in the New Testament. By this time, it was widely known that Jesus uh, could perform miracles of healing. And as he entered Capernaum, uh, a man approached him asking for help. And later on in verse 10, we see, it says, Jesus marveled. In other words, he was amazed by this man's faith. I find only two times in the scriptures where Jesus was amazed. The other one is in Mark, where it says he was amazed at their lack of faith, meaning the people of Nazareth, his hometown. And of all the people Jesus expected to have faith, it was them. But they were sorely lacking. So let me ask you this question this morning. As Jesus looks into your life, this very moment, Jesus is always looking at our lives. Where would you stand? Uh, is Jesus amazed by your abundance of faith? Or is he amazed by your lack of faith? How would you answer that question? And here is a man who is a Gentile, a person that most people would expect to have no faith. Yet his faith is such that it causes even the Son of God to take pause and express his admiration and amazement. And I see three things here that made his faith so amazing. Number one... He was an amazing man, period. Secondly, he was a man uh, of humility. And thirdly, he was one who trusted an amazing God. I asked uh, Brother Hilton how long I could preach this morning. <laughs> and so uh, bear with me this morning. And to give you some background, a centurion was a soldier who served in the Roman army. There are some who question whether they were really Romans or not, or foreigners who had been enlisted to serve in the Roman occupation. It doesn't matter. For all practical purpose, they were Roman soldiers. And this particular man was a centurion. He was in charge of a hundred men, as his, his title indicates. And uh, we know that at this time, Jews were living under the rule of the Roman government. And since these centurions represented the face of the Roman Empire, they for, were for the most part hated and despised by the Jewish people. History reveals that these soldiers often took advantage of and mistreated the Jewish people. For instance, if a Roman soldier needed something done, a chore of some kind maybe, he could arbitrarily 
pull a Jewish man from the public and have him perform that task for him. The Jewish man might be uh, in the process of working, providing for his family, or tending to his own affairs. It didn't matter. He had to stop whatever he was doing and obey uh, the command of a person who had power. And it was such dirty nonsense as this and other injustices that the Jewish people had to put up with. But fortunately, all soldiers and centurions were not alike. This particular centurion was about as good as a person can get. There is no better way to describe him except to say he was an amazing man. And some people are like that. Just by nature, they are good, decent, honest, caring people. And he was one of them. And in Luke's account of this story, they tell Jesus that this centurion built us a synagogue. And he loves the nation of Israel. Who does that? A man with a good heart. And the beauty of this man's character becomes even more obvious when he is faced with a crisis in his life. He has a servant at home. And he says, this servant is paralyzed and is dreadfully tormented. Now, picture that, those words in your mind for a moment. Dreadfully tormented. He was suffering in a way that we hope and pray never happens to any of us. Without medical, modern uh, medical and pain management, I cannot begin to imagine uh, the kind of agony these people suffered when they were sick and injured. And the thing that made this centurion different is that most centurions, if in the same situation, could have cared less about that servant. In that world, a servant, uh, a, the, sl the average slave owner, regarded his servants as objects, as tools to be disposed, uh, you know, any way they wanted to. Most of them would attempt to sell off, to get rid of a sick servant, but not this man. And, and according to Roman law, a centurion could even kill a sick or disabled servant. How inhumane is that? But there was something inside this centurion that would not even think of such a cruel alternative. Instead, he felt the devastating pain of the suffering of another human being. And my friends, there's a word for that. It's called compassion. He loved his servant. And compassion is the ability to put yourself in another person's shoes and feel your own personal pain and burden for that person who is suffering. I believe this centurion would have gone to the very ends of the earth to find help for his servant, moved by his compassion. And at this point, his only hope is Jesus Christ. And that's exactly where he goes. He goes to Jesus, secondly, because he is a man of profound and amazing humility. I want you to think about this scenario for a moment. This Roman centurion is a part of the problem for the Jews. 
the Romans were sworn enemies of the Jews. They resented it with a passion that they were living under Roman rule. Uh, yet, this Roman has the audacity to go where? To go to a Jew and ask him for help. I believe it would take a lot of humility to do that. And this centurion wasn't foolish. He knew that no matter how generous he had been to the Jewish people, as a Roman soldier, he was still identified with the enemy. He was still a part of that oppressive machine. The fact that he was in a uniform connected him with the oppression and suffering of the Jewish people. And there was no way around that. I want you to uh, suppose for a moment that there had been a Jewish uprising in Capernaum at that time. And we know there was a group of Jewish men called the Zealots. And their purpose in life was to overthrow the Roman government. Uh, Simon the Zealot was a member of these, this group. And if these Zealots had stirred up a revolt in Capernaum, this Roman centurion would have had no choice but to mobilize his forces and crush that rebellion and to do it with brutal, deadly force if necessary. And at that point, any friendships go out the window. <laughs> any ties are, are done away with because he had no choice but to perform his duty. That was his job. Even if lives, Jewish lives, were lost in the process. So he understood very well that he was in no position to demand anything from Jesus. He was in no position to feel entitled uh, from anything from Jesus. Instead, the Bible says he came to Jesus pleading. He came to Jesus begging. And he did so in a spirit of humility. And as a military leader, he wasn't uh, accustomed to begging. He wasn't accustomed to, to asking. This man was accustomed to telling. He was accustomed to giving orders. He says, if I tell a soldier to go there, he goes. If I tell him to come, uh, he comes. He does what I tell him to do. But now he found himself in a place where he knew he was at the absolute mercy and kindness of a gracious God. Excuse me, I'm running a little dry this morning. And we know that this is no less true of any of us. Any good thing that we receive from the hand of God is certainly not because we deserve it. It is certainly not because we are entitled to it. Due to the sinful, fallen creatures we are, <clears throat> the divine blessings that touch our lives every single day are a pure and simple gift. From a gracious God. The Lord not only treats us better than we deserve. The Lord treats us way, way better than we deserve. We need to fall on our knees in humility. Morning and night. And thank Jesus for the kindness he pours into our lives on a daily basis. This man was a person of status. He obviously had money. He built a synagogue. And I imagine he lived in a nice, comfortable home with servants. Uh, and he did not become a centurion by being a slouch. In the military, we called them dirt bags. <laughs> this man was at the top of his game. 
He was courageous and had proven himself in battle. He was a man of power and influence, but he didn't let any of that go to his head. You know, most people in his situation, most would, this would have been enough to fill most people with all kinds of selfish pride that nobody else would have been able to stand them. Amen. Yet, he is so humble, he didn't feel worthy to have Jesus even come to his house. Amen. And he also knew that <clears throat> The Jews believed if a Gentile entered a Jewish home, that home would become clean. And, and this soldier is sensitive to that. And even that sensitivity is evidence of his humility. Besides, he was fully confident in the healing power of Jesus that he knew Jesus didn't even need to go to his house. He could say the word right where he was, that he could heal this man from a distance. And verse 8, the centurion said to Jesus, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Amen. Now, when Jesus heard these words come out of this centurion's mouth, he was absolutely dumbfounded. It's if he could not believe what he was hearing. You would expect to hear this from a Jewish person who had grown up under the scriptures. You would expect to hear this from a person who had grown up under the Jewish faith. A person who had grown up. Uh, listening and, and reading the prophets, uh, the uh, Torah, and singing the Psalms of David. But you would not expect to hear this from a man who grew up under the influence of an empty pagan religion. Yet that was, that's what happened. And no one is more surprised than Jesus. He said in verse 10, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Even Jesus' disciples who followed him, learned from him, ministered with him, and even lived with him, did not display this kind of faith. And this man believed from the very depths of his soul that Jesus could heal his servant. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus healed this man's servant. Then his faith was amazing because he trusted in an amazing God. Only God could take such a crisis, such a hardship, and use it to build such faith and hope in a person's heart. <clears throat> I have known people who were faced with a crisis. People whose world had turned upside down for one reason or another. And instead of trusting God, they chose to be bitter. And angry with God. And this centurion could have chosen to be bitter. He could have given up any hope. He could have cursed God for his misfortune. Instead, he chose to listen to a higher voice. Deep down inside. That told him to cast all his cares on the Lord. And that made all the difference. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 1 Peter 5, 7, which says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for us. Amen. And you might be burdened with something in your life this morning that is weighing you down or even challenging your faith. I have discovered in life that for reasons we do not know, 
God doesn't always remove our burdens. He didn't for Paul. Paul said, I I prayed and prayed. He had a thorn in the flesh three times, but God did not remove it. But he did say, the Lord did say, my grace is sufficient for you. But I've also discovered that even though God may not remove our burdens, he helps us carry our burdens. And I can personally testify to that. And many of you can too. God is with us on the mountaintops and He walks with us through the deepest, darkest valleys in our life. Come unto me, said Jesus, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The thing that excites me about this story is that the centurion's faith not only led to a miracle of healing, it led to a greater miracle of salvation. God used this centurion's faith to seal his eternal destiny in heaven. Now, when Jesus said, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel, how can that be anything less than a saving faith? It it can't be. If this centurion was not saved, then the disciples were not saved. It means that no one else in Israel was saved because Jesus had never witnessed such faith among anybody in Israel. His faith transcended that of anyone else among the Jewish people. And in the Gospel of Matthew, unbelievers referred to Jesus as rabbi or teacher. They would not dare call him Lord or even think of him as Lord, unbelievers. But believers, on the other hand, called him Lord. And not once, but twice, this centurion in this passage calls Jesus Lord. (laughs) Which is an expression of submission. This centurion submitted himself to the complete authority and lordship of Jesus over his life. And I want you to listen to verse 11. Jesus said, Many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And and what we have here in this verse is a picture of the great heavenly banquet or feast that we read about in Isaiah, uh, the gospel of Luke, and also the book of Revelation. Revelation 19.9 calls it the wedding supper of the Lamb. Luke 14, 15 says, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. And Jesus' point here is that this centurion will one day take his seat at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and enjoy a great feast and rich fellowship with Jesus Christ forever. Not because he was a good man. Not because he built the Jews a synagogue. Not because he loved the nation of Israel. But because he humbled himself and believed in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. There was a notion among Jews that one of the joys of the heavenly kingdom was the anticipation 
that there would be no Gentiles there <laughs> in God's kingdom. That only people of their own kind would be there. And what they failed to realize is that many of them would not be there. Many of them would not be seated at this glorious heavenly feast. Because look at verse 12. Verse 12 tells us that. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, who are these sons of the kingdom? Jesus is talking about those Jews who trusted in their Jewish heritage. Those who trusted in their biological connection to Abraham to be saved and enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, if a person trusts in their Jewish heritage, their biological connection uh, to be saved and go to heaven, sadly, they are in for a rude awakening. And oftentimes, great faith is defined by the amount of faith a person has or by the depth of one's faith or the level of sincerity of one's faith. And, and many people in our world today have all those things. They have sincere faith. They have deep faith. And they have a lot of faith. But the problem is, listen to me carefully. They put their faith in all the wrong things in this world. For instance, many people put their faith in money and material possessions in search of happiness and contentment. One of the richest men who lived in the last century in the United States was a man by the name of Jean Paul Getty, the founder of the Getty Oil Company. He was married and divorced five times. And he once said, I would gladly give all my millions for just one happy, successful marriage. Don't get me wrong this morning. There is nothing morally wrong with wealth. Paul indicated it is when we fall in love with money. That is the root of all evil. And money can buy a lot of good things, but it will never buy the most important thing. It will never buy a happy and fulfilling life. And Jesus warns us not to put our faith in money, but to lay up treasures in heaven for yourselves. And many others put their faith in people, expecting people to fulfill them and make them whole, only to discover that people will fail you and disappoint you at the drop of a hat. Over the years, when couples have come to me to get married, they will often say, Preacher, I have found the one who will make me whole. She will make me complete and fulfilled. And that's when I began to get concerned. God did not design marriage for a man and a woman to make each other whole or to make each other complete. God designed marriage for a husband and wife to complement each other and to unselfishly serve one another. And I'm convinced that that's why so many marriages fail Couples enter into the relationship with all the wrong expectations. The truth is that no one can make you whole. 
other than Jesus Christ himself. Only Jesus can complete you. Only Jesus can fill that God-shaped void in your life. Other people put their faith in popular opinion, cultural practices, politics, and personal preferences to find truth and meaning in life. Rather than putting their faith in the truth and the authority of God's word. Amen. Only to end up with a frustrating emptiness inside. And then there are those who, who put their faith in themselves. Those who feel they can pave their own road to heaven by being a good person. By being a decent person. By doing more good deeds than bad deeds. Someone said uh, that trying to, to go to heaven by doing good works is like trying to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a paper boat. I've crossed the Atlantic Ocean many times. It's a long ways. It's impossible. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one goes to the Father except through putting your faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. And though this centurion had a lot of faith, it wasn't about that. It wasn't about how much faith he had. It was where he put his faith that made his faith so amazing. He trusted Jesus not only for the healing of his servant, but for the healing of his very own soul. And... It's not complicated, friends. Not at all. Amazing faith is simple faith. Amazing faith is simple, childlike faith in an amazing God. In Matthew 18, Jesus called, called a little child to him. He set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. The important question is, where is your faith today? I hope your faith is in nothing or no one other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'll close with this. As I was preparing uh, this message, something came to me that I had never thought of before. It had never occurred to me before, and I don't ever remember anyone else mentioning it. But as I thought about that heavenly banquet, that heavenly feast, that Jesus talks about here. It occurred to me that there is no food in hell. Which means that's the last place I want to be. <laughs> can, can I get a witness on that? <laughs> that is the last place I want to spend eternity. I don't want to live in a constant state of agonizing hunger. In addition to all the other horrifying realities of being separated from a loving God. To live in total darkness. Surrounded by constant weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I don't think any of you 
want to spend eternity there either. If you want to go to a perfect place of unforeseen beauty and sit around the table with the man who died for you, <laughs> with the man who took your place on the cross and suffered torture and humiliation that no other person uh, should have to suffer where there is good food and plenty of it, then all I can tell you is don't leave here today without Jesus. Amen. Don't leave here today without uh, giving your heart to the man who loved you so much that he died for you. I'm glad Jesus died for my sins. I in no way deserved it. And when I think about that Christ has forgiven me of every sin, every sin, not just some of them, but every sin in my life, it blows my mind. That is 68 years of undeserved forgiveness. And faith, faith in Jesus is your invitation. Your invitation to a place like no other. To sit at the table in this glorious heavenly feast. Friends, I'm going to be there. My reservation was made a long time ago when I received Jesus into my heart. And I hope you will be there as well. Let's bow our heads. Our Father, we praise you and thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave all he could give, who shed every drop of his blood and every ounce of his humility. To do something, Lord, that we could not do for ourselves. Lord, we could not pay that debt. We could not pay that, that penalty uh, for our sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Not only a spiritual death, but an eternal separation from a God who loves us. And Lord... If there is one here today who doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you would speak to their hearts this moment. Help them realize their need of a Savior. Lord, soften their hearts today. Lord, and bring them to a saving knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to have a song of invitation. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, Praise the Lord. I tell people that there is no better time than now to receive Jesus. Because the truth is, this could be the only time. We don't know what's going to happen when we walk out those doors today or even before we uh, walk out uh, those doors. We urge you to come. Surrender your heart to Jesus. It's a decision you will never regret. The most important decision you will ever make in your life. God bless you. Penny for your thoughts, I said to the old man As he sat there on the park bench all alone With silver hair, wrinkled brown eyes gleaming he smiled and said, just thinking about my home. We sit down and we share 
some laughs together as a cinnamon of remembrance they did roll we talked about life's gain and all its losses oh but mostly he just talked about his home he says I'm thinking about home thinking about going home dreaming about leaving here ready to be moving on it won't be long before the sun will set and I'll be gone, but until then, I'll be thinking about home. I said, tell me, old man, where's your home and what's it like? He said, oh, ain't nothing around here can compare. You see a king had it built and gave the deed to me and all of my family's already there and now I'm thinking about home thinking about to be moving on it won't be long before the sun will set and I'll be gone but until then I'll be thinking about home How many of you yes that, I'm that thinking about home thinking about going home Dreaming about leaving here, ready to be moving on. It won't be long before the sun will set and I'll be gone, but until then, I'll be thinking about It won't be long before the sun goes down. I'll be gone, but until then, I'll be thinking about coming and being with us and his family I, we're going to ask you before you leave to speak with them be conscious it's COVID we're still we, we haven't been freed of it so be conscious uh, of that getting too close shaking hands but speak with him and his family encourage them let them know how much you enjoy being here uh, them being here with us to minister to us and us being here to, to receive this blessing from God but before we go, it's the first Sunday of the month, and we have something we have to do. Well, I get, you know, I have to suffer for that. You bear with me a minute? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Y'all remember, don't you? Yeah. Okay. First Sunday of the month. So we remember where we are. If you have a birthday in the month of November, would you please stand? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you.
Happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary to you. A happy anniversary. God bless you. A happy anniversary to you. Why don't we all stand? Oh. Oh, what a wonderful service this has been. We get to honor men who, who gave such a part of their life for us. Men who are, are living with some repercussions of giving their life for us. Men who have, were faithful to our country. Men who we, we would be naive to not consider them men and women not consider them whenever we pray so as we pray let's do remember all our veterans those who are passed on those who are who are no longer serving those who are serving let's keep them in our hearts in prayer let's keep each other in prayer remember those who are sick that yes. the requests that have been made those yes. who are in the hospital uh there we have some family who are still struggling with with everything that's going on around them and as we remember them in prayer, let's not forget to praise God for all his blessings on us. He's been good to us. I mean, look around. A few months ago, we didn't have a congregation like this. It was much scaled back. But God has been with us every step of the way. And he's going to march with us. As a matter of fact, he's going to pull us through. <laughs> And as he pulls us through, we're going to follow him. Are we not? Amen. We're going to follow him again. Reverend Chris, we, we thank you. We're going to ask if you would, uh, you and Miss Teresa, uh, your daughter, your uh, granddaughters, if they want to go, their friend, just to this back wall right here. Just, just speak with them. You don't have to hug their necks. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to shake them and touch them. they I know some of y'all, y'all, some of y'all were amazed when he said 68 years. You thought I was older than him. <laughs> I can't fit in clothes I wore 19 years ago. <laughs> but uh, we, it has been a good day, has it not? Amen. Amen. We're going to give God praise for this day. I didn't preach about, about his fellowship. Uh, also, don't forget, in the fellowship hall, there are... There are some sliced cake that are for sale. Is that right, Brother Tim? Sliced cake. Barbecue. Barbecue, pot of pound, and, and calendars. So we got somebody over there helping them with that now? Okay. <laughs> okay. Huh? We got two meetings right after worship service. Don't forget which meeting you are supposed to be part of. Do you remember? Who was it? Amen. All minds and hearts clear. God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Now we ask that you would go with us. Lead us, guide us, direct us. Keep us safe from all harm. Keep a hedge around us until we can meet again. And when we meet again, God, whether it's on this side of life or whether it's in glory, God, we want to praise you. We want to worship you. So God, we can give our lives to you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.